Oops, a torn piece of paper is just the beginning. Oh, hello. It's good to see you today. I hope you're doing well. It's been a while, hasn't it? Welcome to another episode in my series, 52 Things on My Artie Bookshelf. Each week this year, more or less, I'm creating a piece of mixed media artwork based on one or more of the many, many books that I have on my Artie Bookshelf. Let's take a look and see what I got up to. Not this week, this was something that I did, oh, a very long time ago. I started out with this children's board book called Beautiful Oops, and it encapsulates my art process so very beautifully. And indeed, it does start with this torn piece of paper, and it's all about what you do when things don't go quite as planned, how you change direction and come up with something more beautiful and more interesting than you ever imagined when you started out. And I'm taking inspiration this week from two of the ideas in this book. We'll start out with the torn piece of paper. And I have this piece of torn paper that's left over from a workshop that I did when I was over on Gabriola Island earlier this year. I'm still thinking about Japanese design after the previous week. And I'm going to use this piece of pink foil to mend my tear. There's a Japanese way of using gold to mend broken pottery and allowing the cracks to show and that's the spirit that I'm capturing here by using this pink foil and I know you're wondering that that's a big piece of paper there was a lot of untorn parts but if I would used those untorn parts I would not have a story to tell you today and I think that this is a perfectly good way to use up the torn part rather than it being garbage and throwing it away. And also I'm thinking I want to use the other parts of that paper for something else. And as you can see, I'm not even throwing out the scraps. I'm going to use them on my page. So I really love the way that this piece of paper is all wrinkled and it has these very organic tears. And that brings us to the bent paper part of the book. And my second book that I pulled out for this week is this book on Japanese costume. And I don't know if you know this, but I love Japanese design. Oh, the simple kimono garments with the, oh, with the beautiful, gorgeous embroidery and surface pattern design uh, and weaving. I love I just, oh, I love this book. My jacket that I'm wearing today, this is actually not a kimono. It is a jacket that's made to be worn on top of a kimono. And it is silk, it's tie dyed silk. And all of these designs here are done by hand. They're all individually tie dyed, even these little teeny tiny little shapes here. I could look at this book forever. I really, really love this book. So as you can see, it just goes on and on and on with just one more beautiful design after another. So I've taken out some of my hand printed papers here and I'm really deciding which one I want to use for this next part and I'm really looking for something that's a good contrast with the pink there and I think this dark blue green piece is going to work really well for what I have in mind and this is all going to be about bending paper. Now I had considered using a book about origami paper folding as my second book but it turns out that I don't have one. A long, long time ago, I did have one, but I haven't seen it for a long time, so perhaps I've given it away. But on the cover of it, there was a kimono out of paper. Now, I no longer have those instructions, and I no longer remember how this is going to work. But I can remember parts of it, and I'm not actually doing origami which relies strictly on folding there's no cutting or anything and as you can see I did do a sample before I started to figure out if I could find a way to fold a kimono and this is what I've come up with starting with this long piece of paper and folding it down and then cutting the bottom part off to make that into the into the sleeves those long pendulous sleeves that a Japanese garment has. 
and there you go I am cutting I'm rounding off the corners off this piece just like the corners off my hairy are are rounded so I I like the way that looks and I am going to take full artistic license and glue the sleeves onto the back of my kimono there but I think that looks pretty good and now I am going to make an obi the sash that goes around the kimono and one of the things that I particularly love about Japanese design aesthetics is their complete disregard for what people normally call matching they mix colors and patterns and design elements without without any regard to matching so I found something that I think almost clashes with the blue and the green this bright sort of mauvey pinky mauvey color and I'm going to use that for my obi and I'm gluing it down on my page and I love this to me this encapsulates everything that I love about the de Japanese design the contrast between the organic grungy pink background with the very precisely crisply folded kimono on top I'm thoroughly pleased with this page, I have to say. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. It's great to have you here, and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.